into the whiskey vault. <laughs> what did that voice Today. come from? Oh, like an old lady. Today. We're drinking, hey, we're drinking your favorite today, Rex. Glenn Fode? Spa space side. Oh. <laughs> Ironically, it's not a space side. So, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's bourbon. Uh, no, so here's what's funny is Total Wine. Mm -hmm. As Total Wine just showed up in Austin in the last year and a half, two years. Ish. Ish. Yeah. They opened up over by my house, and uh, I think they're an East Coast brand originally. Okay. Um, and they have an amazing store experience. I like the interior. It's a good interior. Yeah, it's a beautiful store experience. Yeah. Um, they also are, I think, more than any other liquor store mm -hmm. I've ever been to, yes. are dominated by house brands in whiskey. Like there okay. are there are a handful of whiskey brands in Total Wine right. that are Total Wines. So house brands, for clarification, house brands are the brands that are they doing like a barrel pick or is it like a Kirkland and Costco type? Well, of it's not as extreme as Kirkland, but it's things like the Spay series, like Spay River right here. Yeah. Like I can only find those in Total Wine. Oh, so do you think right? they have like ex I mean, exclusive distribution? I think they're using working with brands to create stuff for the Total Wine stores. Okay. Yeah, and now this is one of them. I think this is connected to the Total Wine lineups. Yeah. So there is no Glen Fodry Distillery. Okay. Um, we know it's Space Side, and uh, that's about it. We, there's no other information now. Um, Forty-seven point one percent. So whatever they're doing, whether it's, it's an exclusive thing or. A House brand labeling, whatever, it smells really nice. This is jumping out of the glass. By the way, this is from Luke Holmes. Oh, I'm shifting gears. I was, sorry, all, I was all up in it. I was all I know, up in it. I know, I know. I'm Luke sorry. Holmes, you magnificent. Bad. This smells a lot to me. Like a space egg. Like a space egg. I get that honey and pear. Yeah. I get honey and... I get kind of a malty, musty note too, though. So, yes to all those things, except I don't know if it's pear as much as it is. See, I get more of a more of a strawberry note on the nose than I do a pear note. But that fruity sweetness... Yeah, smell that. It's a fruity sweetness. And keep them distinct. Okay, you gotta go hunting a lot more on this. Mm-hmm. And this, there's some maltiness in here. Yeah. Okay, what did you pour? Well, look, it go back and forth, but they're in the same family. Yeah, there's maltiness in here. This is less fruity, mm -hmm. less fruity, less intense and vibrant on the nose, but still directionally they have some similarities. Yeah, this one's kind of light and thin, and then the turned up in density and impact is the Glen Fodry 12. And that, yeah, the honey, the fruitiness for me is like a strawberry fruitiness, and that maltiness, like slight twinge of dustiness. All yeah, that I agree with that too. Okay. What did you say this That was monkey shoulder. Monkey shoulder, okay. Yeah, which is a blend of three malts. Oh, right on. Oh, weird! It got wow. way more barrel bitter than I thought it would. Oh man, I'm just rocking the the honey, like the honey, uh, fruity sweetness. That's weird because my first thing that hit my palate right. was uh, barrel tannin. All right, here's the thing though: wood tannins. Because I had a coffee about 45 minutes ago. Okay, I so I may be acclimated to the bitterness. My last coffee was two hours ago. Okay, so I'm not finding hardly any bitterness at all. That honey. <laughs> Fruit note is just dominating the palate for me. You're finding bitterness, but you're much further away from a coffee. It right. also could be the bitterness of tears. <laughs> no, those are sweet. <laughs> they sustain me. Okay, I'm still getting like a center cord of barrel tannin, but it's surrounded by uh, honey yeah. and candied fruits. Yeah. And but if you let it spread a little bit, which then that's that's the moment where I. You said candied fruits, mm -hmm. and in that moment, it's like, wow, the sugars. Took it over. Yeah. So I'm in a little water to mine. Mm -hmm. You want to do the same? Yeah, yeah, see what happens. I think there's enough in there that it could make a meaningful difference. Yeah, this is coming in at 47%. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, they weren't uh, they weren't trying to skimp here. Kept it respectable. Okay, look at that. And then a second. On the nose, acclimating to the sweetness a bit, and there's that barrel mustiness on the nose. That dusty wood mm -hmm. note on the nose that's starting to peek through. Oh, it got sweeter and the barrel spice tamped down a little bit, but it also got a little more malty dust kind of note. Yeah, it got a little more earthy, but not as bitter. Yeah. And a little sweeter. A little sweeter. Less, with water. Less fruity, more sugary on mm -hmm. the sweetness. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. It's, I a, like, it's a nice whiskey. I like that. I'm betting that's a budget 12. And if it is, that's 
a totally budget, worth it. A budget twelve. Yeah, like uh, because the house brands usually they do that okay. to have something that's a little more affordable for people. Usually, but that they make their money on. Usually, budgets are going to be like in the forty percent though. You're saying this is. I'm thinking a budget with pizzazz. Oh. Oh, that sounds like, um, well, maybe not, $30, $80. No, that's 21 This one is $37 at Total Wine. Oh, yeah. It's reasonable. I think that's a reasonable Again, price. Again, prices are super regional, but yeah, blah, blah, blah. Benjamin Eves, shout out to the mods. They do God's work in there. In the Facebook group. In the Facebook group. And yeah. Then, well, and then, Can you imagine? Hold on. We got, we got, we got mods in the, the subreddit, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying one at a time, though. In, I'm starting with the Facebook group. Can you imagine having to mod it? For 15,000 people. <laughs> yes, because I'm also mud. Yeah. <laughs> See, I go in and every once in a while I get the same alert that says people are reporting things and stuff. And I click it and I just go, <laughs> and I close it knowing like I don't have to deal with that. So, so oh, oh, oh. Because <laughs> I'm oh, bad at dealing with it. Oh, oh, I'm remembering so many things. Mm, okay. 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 And I never remember during the shoots. Must be the whiskey. <laughs> oh, wait. Like I, and subscribe. I drink and I know things. Where's our ding? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna make me forget, you ass. Oh, okay. Okay. Carry on. Here's the thing. As much as it pains me to say, in the groups, we do have to keep things whiskey related. Every once in a while, I'll see people reporting dad jokes. Yeah, <laughs> which now, makes me laugh every time. Because of this ass hat. Yeah, every time I see. And there are a couple people who've made it like they're living. <laughs> to report every dad joke in the Facebook Which group. Which is very, that's justified. I don't, I that think, is, it's garbage humor and this should not every be Every time there. I pull it up and I see the same person reporting dad jokes, I laugh out loud you every shut time. Your, you shut your filthy head. <laughs> but because whiskey related or at least tribe related, this piece of garbage yeah. <laughs> has made dad jokes tribe related so uh -huh. that it, uh, it's not, it's not good, it's not funny. Shouldn't be there. You should feel bad. Like, in the core of your being bad. If you ever put a dad joke in there, no. Nah. But he, he, it's his fault if they show up. Uh, the other it's thing, one of the is, oldest forms of humor. The other thing is, uh, oh, there was a guy that made a comment that I want to read on the channel. All right, okay. So a comment from the Whiskey Tribe channel or mm. other channel. Uh, he says, "Beer guy gaming. I have a small favor to ask. My place burned to the ground." This past Friday, Holy and crap. unfortunately, everything has gone, including his liquor collection, oh. which included more than dozens of bottles of whiskey. Oh. Uh, anyway, I was wondering if during one of your upcoming YouTube videos, you could make a toast to my future being brighter than it is today. He would re greatly appreciate it. God bless. Yes, Man. Rich, Rich Beerman. <laughs> Dude. Here's, I'm so sorry. Here's to insurance coming through hard and fast. Oh God! And you had some twenty thousand dollar whiskeys in there, from what I understand. And he, yeah, yeah. As far as that, <laughs> as far as we know. All right, to Rich and the Upswing, which is inevitably going to come soon. <laughs> yes. Cheers. Cheers. No, and the other thing is, if we're talking about garbagey dad jokes, I'll often see because I float around the other YouTube channels. I'm in there. I see comments. Uh, I, I, I don't participate because whenever I do, it often distracts from what the other channels are doing, so I'm lurking. Mm. And I've seen more than a few times people be in another channel and they'll comment about, Yo, you guys are doing it just like the Whiskey Tribe, you're trying to be Rex and Daniel, you're trying to be Whiskey Vault, and things like music no. choices. No. It's like the music we use has been used in so many different videos. It's no copyright music. Right. So if you see other channels doing stuff, it's not that they're trying to copy us necessarily. There's just, not a single YouTube channel like, I know of right. that's even attempting to replicate what we're doing in oh, any way. I, I do. It's Which one? Just, like, there's some bicycling channel where they just, they took our format. They did? And applied it. Yeah, and it doesn't fit their personalities at all. It's really weird. I forget the name. Oh, hopefully they're not our people because you no, just no, chat no. all over their YouTube no, channel. No, well, I mean, they've seen our show plenty of times. Oh. <laughs> like, like, beat for beat, they're trying to emulate. Wait a minute. Doing. There was a guy who emailed me and said, we want to, oh, no, no, no. There was a guy who emailed and said, hey, I, I run a, a, um, a pin, right. a, a fan group for like fountain pens and oh. ornate writing and things like that. Sure. And he wanted to know if he could borrow our phrase, the only pen, the only good pen is the pen you like to use. And I was like, dude, please, yeah. we don't care. That's <laughs> fine. Uh, so, so to that point, um, Aquavite, mm -hmm. Roy, yeah. he uses music from DJ Quads, which... Which we use on the Tribe channel. All the time, because yeah. he's a no, a no copyright artist, so but he's not copying us. He's been using it forever. He predated us with it even. And, yeah, probably. And 
uh, hit, DJ Quads is all over YouTube, but there is a question I constantly get asked on our other channel. Mm. Hey, what's that music you use for like the intro and the, oh, right. and the outro? DJ Quads, Millionaire. Just if people ask that question, please give them the answer. Yeah. We put it in the description, and, and they, they never still read it ask anyway. the question. <laughs> DJ Quads, the name of the song is Millionaire. Wow, you had a lot of like community updates today. This, man, this is a memory. Oh, the Glenn Fodry Space Side's really going to your head. It's a memory elixir. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here, John Verstrate. Uh, Verstrate. Uh, yeah, John. You Terry, him. Terry Dolan Day. Everyone in the <gasps> comments better behave. What? He's just a. Ruthless. What do we do if we a do a Terry of, Dolan? A son day? of a bitch. He's a ruthless son of a bitch. <laughs> Jason Gladstone, 46% no clouds. I've not heard or experienced. Oh, oh, no cloudy whiskey if you have 46% whiskey. So here's the thing about that is if you add water to it, you just took it below 46. Right. I mean, if it's non chill filtered, it might create some cloudiness. What 46 and up tends to do is that when it's cold, it doesn't get cloudy. Okay. Right? But there's there's so many things affecting the cloudiness in whiskey that a small change in any one of them is going to change. So there's not a hard and fast rule that it's like, whiskey's cloudy and at 46, not cloudy. It doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. It's just roughly around 46 and up um, is when you stop having to chill filter to keep whiskey looking pretty. Mm. Right? I mean, like when we added water to this one, it was at 47, right. and it did get a little bit cloudy after a little bit of water adding. So, circling back to the Glen Fodry, after letting it sit for a while, acclimating to some of the sweetness, now I'm finding a new level of like a floral sweetness, almost, al almost like a jam. Like a mixed berry jam, like a preserves type of deal. Yeah, I, I get that all the yeah. I blah. Yeah, yeah, it's like another you know, so this is this is uh, has some complexity to it. It's a nice whiskey. I really like it. Hopefully, it's all over the place in total wines and you guys. Can I just find wish it. we knew where it was coming from, and we know it's one distillery. Yeah. Um, and whoever it is, they're making really good whiskey. That's what we know. Yeah. Yeah. All, all right. right. Here's the fight of stealing and drinking. If you fight me, you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink, may you drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the whiskey vault. Don't forget to throw on a like. Hit that subscribe button on the bottom right drop a question or comment down below.